Good morning, everybody. My name is Tim Pulaski with Trimac, and today we're going to be taking a look at SolidWorks Electrical Schematic. So SolidWorks Electrical Schematic is an electrical design tool that allows you to quickly and easily create schematic drawings. But not only that, it also allows you to create the supporting documentation that goes along with it. Uh, and fully automate that process. So what we see a lot of companies doing is they're spending some time drawing these, these types of schematic prints using various tools, uh, anything from AutoCAD to SolidWorks drawings. And then they're using third-party softwares like Excel to generate their supporting documentations, like bills of materials from to lists, IO lists, et cetera. After all this is said and done, there's an auditing phase that goes into uh, making sure everything is accurate, uh, making sure that everything is done correctly, all your T's are crossed and I's dotted. And if a change occurs at any point in time along this process, you go all the way back to the beginning and start over. So what SolidWorks Electrical brings to the table is it makes this portion of the design much more, uh, uh, much easier and much more quickly uh, produced. And it'll fully automate this portion of the design process uh, to prevent those error-prone and time-consuming steps of making sure that everything is accurate. So what I'd like to show you today is the drafting of an example schematic where we use SolidWorks Electrical to create uh, a set of circuitry and a set of drawings. We'll then reuse some data and cre create you, uh, new reusable content. And then along the way, we're going to be making changes as we go and producing some really nice, accurate final documentation, such as reports and other types of drawings. So to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the intelligent drawing tools that come right out of the box with SolidWorks Electrical Schematic. We're going to rapidly search for symbols and components and add them to our design and basically just show you how easy it is to use the software and to add uh, new circuits to our drawing sheets. So let's dive right in and get started. So to begin this design, I'm going to go ahead and begin drawing a set of multiple wires inside of my drawing. So the software, you know, out of the box, it gives you some access to different wire styles that are all customizable and you can create the ones you need for your particular project. In this case, I'm going to grab a set of five wires for a three-phase circuit. We'll deselect our neutral wire and let's just draw them starting from the top of my page down to the bottom. From there, we'll go ahead and draw another set of wires somewhere around, say, row four. And you'll see that it's going to automatically stagger those wires for me and allow me to maintain spacing all the way out to the right. As I turn corners, you can see that it's going to maintain that spacing. And if I hit the space bar, it'll actually invert the phase for me. So a real nice touch. From here, I can go ahead and begin adding symbols by coming over to the right side of my panel and just searching in my library for something that I want to add to this project. So, you know, in this particular case, I want to add a three-phase motor. So let's search for, uh, we'll just type in motor. Run a search, and you can see that it's going to bring up all my symbols that are related to motor. I'm going to grab this symbol here to represent a three-phase motor, and just by double-clicking on it, I can bring this into the design and place it right on top of my wires. We'll say maybe around here. As I do that, it's going to cut those wires back and it's going to automatically tag that component with a tag that it, uh, matches the, um, in this particular case, the page that I'm drawing on. So you can see the mark is going to start at 200 and begin counting up from there. I can add additional symbols to the list in the same way. Let me add a, um, let's add a fuse to this project to protect everything. We'll say this, uh, I think we just need a three pole, four pole, let's do four pole actually. Drop that right in line. And we'll also need to protect this, cir this circuit here, this individual circuit, as well as uh, controlling it with a contactor relay. So I'm going to browse under my protections group here. Let's grab, let's see, actually I'm just going to do another search. We'll search for a three-phase, a three-pole 
set of circuits, because there's a couple of symbols here that I want to use. We'll grab this one here and drop it right on line. And we're also going to need uh, these three uh, normally open contacts to begin driving this motor. Drop that into place as well. And you can see it's automatically going to cut those wires back and create discrete wires between all of my components for me automatically. Adjusting these is easy. You just drag them around. You can see it's going to shift the wires as necessary. And I'm going to sneak in a couple of terminals in between my contactor relay and motor. Since I don't really want to run wires right out into the uh, onto the shop floor here. So to create these terminals, it's real easy. You just draw a single line across all of the wires, pick an orientation for those terminals, and that's pretty much it. I say OK, and it's going to create a unique terminal for every wire that intersects that wire, uh, that line that we drew. At that point, you can delete the line if you don't want it anymore or keep it there for reference. OK, so now that we have some components in our design, we also need to spec them out and actually add part numbers to these. OK, so the way that we do that is we're going to grab our symbol, right click on it, and go into component and assign a manufacturer part. And you can see that out of the box, the software is going to give you access to only a few manufacturer parts. But online, there you have direct access to something like 4 million manufacturer specified electrical components. So you download what you need. And then once it's been added to your database, it's just a matter of searching for it by part number or manufacturer name, adding it to the project. And you'll see if the symbol has space for it, it's going to add in additional information re re you know, related to that particular component. We can do the same thing for these components over here. Let's make sure that this is going to be, let's see, the manufacturer that I'm going to use here is this SWST for a lot of things. We'll go ahead and add this to the project. My fuse needs a component as well. Let's add this guy right here and just make sure that everything is properly defined. OK, so this case, for my contact or relay, same manufacturer. We just want this contact or relay here. Now the terminals, I can do that in the exact same way. I can grab the terminal and add a manufacturer part to it, no problem. But one really nice aspect of terminals is something called the terminal strip editor. So if I right click on the terminal and open it up, it's going to give me a separate panel that'll allow me to define a number of things related to the terminal strip, as well as keep track of all of the individual terminals in this particular strip. One nice thing I can do here is multi-add manufacturer parts to all four of these terminals at once. So let's say they're all going to be this particular terminal type and say OK. And I've just added four terminals to my project. OK, we'll come back to this a little bit later on once we've got a more robust strip to talk about. But the final thing that this does for us that's really kind of cool is it allows us to generate terminal strip drawings automatically. So what I mean by that is if I click on Generate Drawings and say OK, and come back to my project, you can see it's automatically generated a drawing that looks like this. And it's going to show all the wires coming into this set of four terminals and all of the wires exiting this. But like I said, we really don't want wires exiting this. We want a cable. So let's go back to our schematic and make that so. I'm going to drag all, uh, drag select all of these wires here, and let's replace those with a cable instead. So to do that, I just drag select associate cable cores, and we're going to add a new cable to this project. You can see I can search by the same definitions that I searched for manufacturer parts in my uh, other components library. Except in this case, I've got more cable-specific stuff like gauge, conductor number. You know, we're going to need a four-conductor cable. Uh, let's see. I think I'm looking for a 14-gauge. And it's going to be, I believe it's a power type cable. So I can find that right in my list here. We'll go ahead and add that to the list, add it to the project. And you can see that comes with four cable conductors that I can associate to these wires that I've previously drawn. Now, the easiest way to do that is just drag select all four, associate them. The wires in my schematic drawing are now replaced with the cable conductors, and everything is annotated properly on the print. Real quick and easy. Now that we've added that uh, set of cables, let's go ahead and regenerate 
that drawing that we had created earlier. And I can do that by just right clicking on it and saying update terminal strip drawings. It'll redraw it for me. And I come back to it and open it up. And you can see it's been replaced now. Instead of just four wires coming out of the right side, we've got an actual four conductor cable. And it also specifies what it connects to on the right side. That way we can make sure that all our power requirements are correct and the cable that we're using is accurate. So it's a really, really nice tool. So let's continue our design by popping over to the next page, drawing number three, and getting a bit more specific. We want to add a control schematic to this page here. So I'm going to grab my single wire tool and we'll pick a wire to draw. I'm going to grab this 18 gauge DC, uh, 24 volt DC wire. And let's just, just start off by drawing a box. Okay, just to sort of demonstrate some of the wire tools that are available to us within the software. I'll zoom in here. So when I, when I actually draw a box like this of wires, I can actually click and drag the wires themselves. And you'll see it's going to automatically truncate and split the wires for me, which is quite nice. Now, in this case, I'm going to need to add a set of controls to this. So I'm going to come down to a predefined group that I've set up earlier. And let's actually, underneath my command category here, let's go ahead and add in a couple of controls. So I'm going to need a normally open uh, momentary push button, like this one right here. So we'll double click and add that to my project also going to need a normally closed emergency push button to give this some way of actually stopping itself because ultimately the way this thing's going to work is if I pop back over to my uh, previous search eh, that one's fine let's go to miscellaneous here I think I've got a normally open contact in there I want to use the way it's going to work is when I push this button it's going to make sure that that whole uh, that motor stays on until I actually hit the, uh, the off button over here. Now, the contact relay I had ins inserted earlier in my power schematic, that has multiple components to it. It's got the contacts, but it also has a relay coil. So a really cool thing that the software allows you to do is it allows me to browse for components that I have previously inserted, like that contact relay, CR, uh, I believe that's going to be CR201 was the one I originally inserted. And I can right click on this and select insert symbol and select the circuit that I want to represent from that particular component. So you can see this is made up of the coil, uh, an auxiliary set of contacts, as well as a set of uh, four, or uh, excuse me, three normally open power contacts. Let me grab the relay coil and insert that. And you'll see when I do that, it automatically tags that with the appropriate set of data and gives me a cross reference both here as well as back on this print that points me back to this particular drawing. Now, if I've already inserted a symbol that I meant to represent this particular uh, control, I can actually right click on that and let's go ahead and assign this to contact relay 201 instead. Okay, and that's just going to adopt the properties of that component and slot in for that auxiliary set of contacts 14 and 15. We'll move this down a little bit, and let's go ahead and insert an indicator light as well. Now this, I do want to be associated with this push button, because what we're going to do is have a particular push button that has um, uh, an indicator light along with it. So what I'll do is I'm going to, again, associate that component to my push button 301, so that it adopts the same properties. Okay. To complete this, let's drag this wire up here, drag it right through all those components, and let's draw a set of wires from here to here, here to here, and here to here. And again, what it does is it creates these little connection points for me and automatically truncates the wires, so deleting these segments becomes a really easy task. And then I can just kind of adjust this as necessary. Maybe blow away this little segment down here, okay? But this looks pretty good. Now, the only thing, again, that we're missing are some manufacturer parts. So let's go ahead and make sure we add those. We'll say assign manufacturer parts, run a quick search, and we've got this normally open, momentarily closed push button. And we can do the same for these push buttons and these contactors. 
Uh, but in this particular case, because the contactor was already specified previously, it already has a manufacturer part that goes along with it. Okay. Now, a really cool thing that gets added along with this relay coil is a set of cross-references. Okay, so what this cross-references list does is it keeps, keeps track of all of the contacts that are available on this particular contactor relay. So let's do something funny. Let's come back over here and consolidate. Um, oh, actually, I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later on. Uh, we're going to consolidate some of our normally open contacts, add some more to this list, and you'll see what happens with this later on in the demonstration. But otherwise, we're looking pretty good here. The only other thing that I need to fix is that this is all right now 18 gauge, uh, 24 volt DC wire, but I want this to be a ground wire, a set of ground wires. So I can very easily replace this by just right clicking on it, replacing everything on that side of the circuit with a different wire style, say this ground wire here. And you'll see it goes through and pushes that style out to everything on that side of the circuit. All right, so this looks pretty good for now. So what we've just seen is how easy it was to go ahead and create a number of schematic drawings using the tools available to us within SOLIDWORKS Electrical Schematic. What I want to show you next is how Electrical Schematic can very uh, easily allow you to reuse information and create reusable content that you can use over and over and over again uh, as you go through your designs, um, both adding new symbols as well as new uh, what they call macros that allow you to save entire sets of circuitry to reuse later on. So let's dive in and take a look at that. So if we pop back to our power schematic, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few changes to this as well as copy some of this circuitry because realistically I'm going to have about four, um, four motors in this design or three motors, I think, total. So I'm going to need to reuse a lot of this information here. So what I'm going to do to do that is let's just go ahead and adjust this to make room for some more circuitry. We'll move that down to maybe row five. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to just drag select all of this circuitry here. And I'm going to do control C, control V to copy and paste it from one line to the next. Let's move this down to about row seven. Looks pretty good. You'll see when I do that, it actually automatically retags the new components with the next available ones in line. Even going so far as to within the terminal strip, picking the next available terminal marks, terminals uh, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, same thing with the motor. Okay, but if this is a particular circuit that I'm going to reuse time and time again, it's even better to save this geometry as what's called a macro. So what I'm going to do is, let's just say under motor command as, as an example here, I want to save this set of circuitry. Well, what I can do is just drag select all of it. Let's get rid of that little, that little line there. We don't need you. No, no, I'm mucking it all up. All right, let's just grab this here. Just make sure we're a little bit more careful that time. There we are. And once I have all the circuitry selected, I just click and drag it over into the right side panel. And it allows me to create a motor uh, or a motor macro. So I'm just going to call this three phase motor like so. Uh, I can give it a classification if I want. I can go into as much detail as I'd like. But by saying OK and maybe giving it, I'll just call it new because I've apparently got another one in there called that already. Uh, it creates a macro that I can reuse. And the way that I reuse it is just by double clicking on it as if it were a symbol, and then clicking and placing it right in line with the rest. And you'll see it has a similar functionality to copy and paste in this particular case. It's gonna automatically tag everything. It creates new cables for uh, my connection between the terminal strip and the motor. Very, very nice. Now, what I can also do at this level um, is I can define the location in which these components reside. So locations in the software are really a great way of organizing your physical components into logical, um, like physical locations within the actual design. And I can do this by clicking on location outline up at the top, drawing a box around, say, the motors, because those aren't going to be in the enclosure with all the other components. 
and putting them in something like a conveyor's location or um, you know something external to that electrical enclosure. By doing that, I can change the component location of all of these devices. And you can see what happens is it's going to change the tag here, and it's actually going to grab those motors from the list over here and move them. So it drops those all down into my conveyors location, and it puts a nice box around this just to specify on this particular print that these are actually external to the enclosure that we're detailing over here on the left, which is a really nice touch. Let's go ahead and flesh out some of this design a little bit further. We're going to add in a power circuit uh, via macro, just like we had done earlier. Drop this in uh, to add that power supply to the project. And then what I want to do is I want to connect these wires, these flying leads over here, to my control document over here on the left, uh, on the right side of the page. Okay, so the way that we do that is using something called origin destination arrows. I can grab this command from my toolbar, my uh, ribbon, and what I'm going to do is connect wires from one page to the next. And you see as I hover over these wires, it puts a little green connector on the end, and we'll say we're going to connect this wire to this wire over here, and just like that, it adds that off-page reference for me. We'll do the same thing over here and connect these wires together. And just like that, I have a really nice off-page reference that I can also uh, use to navigate to that page. So say I had this page closed and this was my first time looking at the project, I could just double click on that arrow and it's going to take me right to the page in question. So this is a really great way of navigating your designs without the hassle of having to kind of follow these and uh, create some convoluted numbering structure to you know allow you to more easily navigate uh, through the project. Now what I'm also going to do here is, like I said earlier, is I'm going to consolidate some of these contacts. Instead of having these on three separate devices, let's put them all on the same one. So we're going to assign all of these to CR201 instead. So I'll grab these two down below, right click and say assign, and point these right to CR201, and they become the same component. Now by doing that, you can see that it blew away a lot of my connection labels here because what happened is, is I've exceeded the number of contacts that were available on CR201. And I can see this more clearly by coming back to the parent component, this one right here. And you can see it's listing out all of these extra normally open contacts that are, aren't accounted for by the part number I've assigned. So there's some really nice error checking that the software is doing for us to make sure that it's, you know, make sure that we're uh, creating a robust design. Now I can resolve this in a couple of different ways. I can either assign a totally different component to this particular uh, relay, or I can just add a set of auxiliary circuits to this by just selecting search and browsing for auxiliary contacts like these here. By adding those to the list, you'll see that those red circuits turn to green, meaning they're all present and accounted for. I add that to the list. And what I've actually done here is I've created sort of a mini sub-bomb uh, related just to this component here. So these two part numbers are now associated to CR201. And when I say OK, you see it's going to satisfy all of those normally open contacts, both here as well as on our power schematic. You can see it's filled out all of these properly, and now we've got a really nice, happy, uh, completed design. All right, so all of this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do uh, to continue this is we're going to go ahead and add an additional set of circuits, like this one down here. So I'm going to drop in another macro. We'll put it right in line with our wires here. Just accept the defaults and connect these together. So I'll just drag some of these wires out to combine them together and, you know, what the heck, let's go ahead and may, make a uh, off-page reference between these two wires just so the schematic doesn't get too confusing. Just like that. Looks pretty good. Now, before I get too far into this, I do want to show you one really important aspect of the software, which is the capability to automatically number all of your wires. You'll see some of them have wire numbers and wire marks already because they came from those macros. They were just kind of associated with them. But I can quickly and easily number all my wires by just you know, basically pressing a button 
And it's going to go through the entire project and give all of my wires a unique designator. Okay, and this can be customized to suit all your needs. I mean, this one is being labeled in such a way as to represent a three-phase circuit, whereas the ones on this page over here are just given flat numbering based on the page on which they reside. Okay, so you can see this one's on page, what is this, page three. So these are starting at um, 302 and continuing from there, whereas the ground wire is just ground one in this case. So the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a bunch more circuits between this microcontroller and the rest of my design to sort of control the, the uh, whether or not these motors are engaging or not based on the position of some of the, uh, the packages. I mean, these are conveyor belt motors is probably what they are. So I need some sensors just to kind of control exactly uh, when these are turning on and turning off. So what I'm going to do is add a couple of those to my list or to my, uh, to my project here. Let's go ahead and grab some sensors and drop one in. We'll rotate this around, something like that, and put it in about here. It'll look pretty good. And to this particular sensor, I'm going to draw a set of wires. So we'll grab two wires evenly spaced, draw them from the wires over here. Whoops, that's not the right position. There we are. This wire. Uh, those are backwards. Oh, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a set of two wires and draw those simultaneously like this and connect them to my sensor here. And then we'll shift that down to just draw a single wire, still that 18 gauge wire, and draw that all the way out to my microcontroller on the right. That looks pretty good. Now, similarly to before, I'm going to make sure that I have a set of terminals that actually connect to this device. So I'll draw one line across here, point that out to the sensor. We'll start a brand new terminal strip, terminal strip X2. Say, OK, all terminals. And I'll add a single terminal somewhere around, let's put him way over here. It'll look pretty good. And assign that to the same terminal strip, X2. That looks fine. So once I've got this, again, let's go ahead and add a cable to run out to this particular sensor. I can do that the same way I did before by drag selecting the wires, but another easy way to do that is to go right into that terminal strip editor that we had seen earlier. We need to assign manufacturer parts to our terminals anyway, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. And then we're also going to assign cable conductors to these wires within here. So this is a great way to do this top level. Just grab all the wires. We'll go ahead and add a new cable to this design. Let's see, I think this is gonna be a set of, this is gonna be a control cable. We'll make sure that this is three conductor and grab this particular cable in question, add that to the list. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and assign these to individual wires. So because the order is not really that important here, I'm just gonna make sure that my black wire is associated to ground, my yellow wire is associated to um, kind of to neutral here, or to return, and this one's gonna be associated to the actual power, uh, the red. So by doing that, it's going to set up my cable thusly, and we'll pop back to the schematic, and you can see everything's been detailed properly on this level. So what I'll do here, is let's go ahead and we're gonna hide the main tag for this terminal strip temporarily. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And let's just copy and paste all of this. I can create a macro if I'd like to, but in this case, I think it's just easier to copy and paste because we're gonna make a few changes here. So let's make sure I'm lining that up with my microcontroller over here. That looks good. Lock that in. It's gonna automatically tag all of this stuff for me, which looks pretty good. But what I do need to do is move this so it's a little less cluttered. Let's grab my stretch tool, drag all this out, and then move this maybe, I don't know, like over here will look pretty good, nice and clean. It'd be nice to have these in a line, so what I'll also do is I'll align texts. We'll grab these two uh, wire labels or cable labels and line those up, oh, excuse me, line those up right down the middle. Put that like right here. 
It's pretty good. So with that, I can go ahead and then further copy all of this and do a control C, control V to add a whole bunch more terminals to my terminal strip and a whole bunch more sensors to my design to kind of flesh this out entirely. All right, and you can see, again, it's going to add all of these cables for me automatically. So from here, again, I can, you know, because I just added some new wires to my design, let's go ahead and update my wire numbers, add new wire numbers to all of these circuits. And you can see it's putting the wire numbers right now on the cables, but what I prefer to do, actually, is let's go ahead and hide them here, and let's show them over here instead, where it's a little bit cleaner. That looks good. Now on the left side, let's make sure we turn that terminal mark back on for the top terminal. Uh, attributes, parent mark, that looks good. And what I'm going to do is let's consolidate this terminal strip a little bit because if I take a look on the inside, you can see that I've got a bunch of wires coming in over here on the left, all going out to similarly powered and grounded cables on the right. So realistically, a more intelligent way to handle this is instead of having individual discrete wires for every single terminal, let's consolidate this with bridges. So I'm going to grab all of my power terminals, like this one here, this one here, uh, let's see, U, 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 and U. And we're going to add bridges between those to sort of simulate a, um, like a, 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 a bus bar or something like that to actually connect all these together. We'll do the same thing for the ground terminals, U, 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 and U. And that's just going to give us a much more organized design. Now that this looks good here on the left and the right, let's go ahead and generate some drawings for this terminal strip as well and say OK. So we'll take a look at this one. This one looks a little bit more complex than the previous one. And you can see what it's doing is it gives us not only the sensors at the right, but it also shows us all those bus bars and connections between commonly bridged terminals on the left. Now this is a little cluttered still because I don't really like how it looks since there's only about it's like one and a half cables on this page. So let's edit that one more time and let's actually control the uh, where this is actually breaking, because now it's just automatically breaking down here. Let's put three, well, we'll go by cable. We'll have three cables on one page, three cables on the other. So I'll grab the terminal that I want to use to break this. We'll right click and let's add a page break after that instead. That's a lot more organized. So we can then go ahead and update those drawings. And just like that, push of a button, these are now updated to reflect the changes. And I've got a really nice organized terminal strip drawing to show somebody who's actually assembling this and wiring this up how everything connects together and how everything's related. So really, really nice tool uh, and drawing that the software can produce quite easily. Over here on the schematic, you'll see that those wires have been replaced with uh, a particular wire style that's meant to represent bridges. So I can either leave this here for reference, but in this case it's kind of cluttering everything up, so honestly I can just go in here and delete this. Um, and that's going to make this a little bit more clean and easier to understand uh, at this level. And we can kind of refer to that terminal strip drawing for how these are being wired. Okay, because as you can see inside the terminal strip, inside the terminal strip, where are you? There you are. Uh, everything's still connected together. Okay. And you can click on each of these to see which ones are connected to which. Okay, so what we just saw is how easy it was to copy and paste our circuits within the software. Because of the automatic marking that the software employs, it really just takes care of the tagging for us automatically, as well as copying over manufacturer parts to make sure that our bills and materials are going to be accurate later on. Now, we've already seen some of the rapid changes that we can make in the software as we've gone along by adding in uh, new drawings and new circuits. But what I also want to show you is how the software can be used to generate supporting documentation like cabinet uh, or panel layouts.
uh, that actually show where the physical components are going to go. And I also want to show you the reports that this can generate uh, automatically that are typically a very time consuming process that's done ex externally within something like Excel. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of this functionality inside of SOLIDWORKS Electrical Schematic. So what we're going to do, first and foremost, is we're going to begin by generating a 2D cabinet layout. And what this is going to represent is the actual physical representation of where these components go. I'll do a little bit of final cleanup because these sensors actually should reside in my conveyor location. So let's draw another box around these and throw those in the conveyor's location. All right, just to move those out of the way. And what I do want to do is I want to generate a panel layout just for the electrical enclosure. So we'll do that by coming up to our process tab and creating something called a 2D cabinet layout for that particular location. What this does is it generates a drawing type that allows me to insert not only the electrical components, but also mechanical components like the cabinet, DIN rails, ducting, and show how everything's going to be laid out later on. So let's go ahead and insert some of these. Let's add a cabinet to my design. And I think I'm looking for something 1055 is I believe the size that I'm looking for. So I'm going to add the enclosure as well as a mounting plate for a lot of the components. By adding these to the design, it's going to allow me to place these on the sheet. We'll place the door panel kind of over here, the front of the enclosure. And let's go ahead and insert the uh, mounting panel over here on the left. Now this is a little small, so maybe I'll dial the scale up to one to five instead. And that's just going to scale everything up nicely. And if I had positioned them kind of where I wanted them in the middle of the page, everything would just kind of get a little bit bigger based on that. But this looks pretty good. So let's focus on this mounting panel over here on the left first. I want to go ahead and lay out some of my initial components. Let's start with that uh, fuse disconnector. So I'll right click on the component on the left and say insert and you'll see it'll go into my library and grab a symbol to represent that. And I'll click to place it on the sheet say over here. So the process becomes similar for additional components. So let's grab my power supply and all of my circuit breakers and insert those all at the same time. And I can specify a spacing between them, say like an inch. We'll put those in line with that, um, that fuse disconnector. And it's just going to lay out all those components for me automatically and tag them appropriately as well. We'll make sure that we add our microcontroller down here in the middle, somewhere around, we'll say about here. And we're also going to need our contactor relay. Now remember that contactor relay was made up of two components, both the main contactor relay as well as the auxiliary contacts. We can insert them both at the same time, but we're going to put those right up against one another on the same rail, say over here. Terminal strips have this sort of functionality built right in actually. So if I insert a terminal strip, all I need to do is place the first terminal in that strip. And you'll see what it does is it automatically lays that out and counts out the number of terminals within that strip. We'll do the same thing for this one over here. This one was a smaller uh, terminal size, but it lays out in just the same fashion. Now that we've got all that laid out, let's go ahead and add some mechanical components like ducts. Uh, I'll add a duct to my project. We'll just grab this particular part number right here. And we'll lay that out, say running up above. And you'll see as I place this, I can control the size of this and the length of this. I'm gonna have this run out to maybe about here and that'll cut that back. From there, I can just cut and paste this or copy paste it, control C, control V works nicely. I'll have to play around with the spacing of some of my components, but we'll place this guy here and we'll place this guy maybe down here. And then let's adjust these guys, let's move them down just a hair so that they're not crowding everything like that. Looks pretty good. I'll need one more vertical duct that I'll search for, add to the project, and we'll rotate this around and sort of put it in between these components here. Just make that one really short, like so. The final thing I'll need to do is add in some rails as well. So I'll say, add a new rail to this design. And in just the same way as the ducts, we can place this somewhere in the design, somewhere around, let's put it around here. 
We can control the length similarly. So I'm going to drop this, well, we'll terminate this round here. And we'll do the same thing for subsequent rails. So I can either add new part numbers like this and then just place them in line, controlling the length, or I can copy and paste it, control C, control V. And if I do a copy paste operation, which will work rather nicely for the terminal strip, that fits nicely down there. Uh, but if it's too short, I can actually just resize it by updating the length of a rail, clicking on it, dragging that out. And just like that, it's a little bit longer. So very, very easy to use. From here, you can notice they're sitting on top of the components, so we'll have to change that. Let's just grab all of these rails that we created earlier and change the order. We're going to put these below, say, the first component that I inserted, this fuse disconnector over here, just so everything's cleaned up rather nicely, um, doesn't look so cluttered. So that looks pretty nice. Let's go ahead and detail the door panel. You can see I've already inserted a bunch of components. So what I can do is I can refresh this list by, again, hiding my already inserted components. And you can see all I have left to insert is this push button over here. We'll right click and insert that into my list, say about here. And I, it does make me think too, because I believe I was supposed to have a uh, stop button here as well. So let's do a real quick check. I'm going to go to my process or uh, project tab. We're going to run, run a design rule check because I could have sworn I had another push button here. So what I can see when I run this list is basically a check to see which components are missing manufacturer parts. And in fact, in here, I can see that particular push button. I believe it is push button uh, 302. If I click on it, it'll take me right to that page is missing a manufacturer part. So these design rule checks are a great way of making sure that you've completed the design and that you've added all the necessary information uh, without missing some stuff like wires, uh, you know, missing a mark or components missing a part number. So I will actually assign a component to this as well. Let's grab this normally closed emergency push button. That looks good. Popping back over here, you can see that immediately pops into view. And let's go ahead and add that component as well. There we go. Nice, robust design. So now that I have all of this detailed, what I'm going to do is pop back to my drawing list. And let's produce a number of reports to go along with this. So the reports are a really nice feature inside of the software that, get out of here, symbol. Um, reports are a really nice feature that are going to allow me to catalog things like all of the cables in my design, my bill of materials, uh, you know, all the marks, all the part numbers, and the quantities of each within my project, the list of every single wire that I've drawn, its gauge, its wire number, and its origin and destination. All of this stuff is getting tracked automatically just by virtue of me drawing it within the schematic print. So at this level, what I can do is I can generate actual drawings to go along with these. Uh, let's see, I actually do want one more report. We do want one to represent our uh, cable conductors or our cable uh, cores. So I'll scroll down here. Let's add this report here. These are all customizable, by the way. They give you a bunch out of the, out of the box, but you are highly encouraged to customize these to suit your own needs. Uh, and I'm going to draw just these five reports here. Okay, and when I say okay, it's going to generate reports automatically over here uh, on the left in just a matter of seconds. And once this completes, we can peruse these and take a look at what they contain. Like my bill of materials will be all split up by manufacturer and part number. My list of wires is going to have all of the wires and their origin destinations, uh, cable cores uh, is all going to be laid out based on the cable that's. Uh, representing those cables, uh, those cable conductors, as well as their origin and destination as well. So at this stage, this all looks really great, but you know, my drawing list, you know, maybe I want that to be, I want that to come right after my cover page. Drawing list is just going to have, you know, the page numbers of everything within the, uh, within the book, my power page, my control page, all my terminal strips. It just automatically catalogs that stuff for me. And maybe I just want to play around with the order of everything else just a little bit. Let's go ahead and close out of some of these. You know, honestly, let's just close out of all of our documents. 
And I'm going to reorder this so that maybe we put all the cable stuff at the end by my wire styles, like that. So you'll see as I do that, the, um, the numbers have not updated, okay? So they stay the same until I tell it otherwise. But in SolidWorks Electrical, this isn't really that big a deal when this occurs. I can come up to my Process tab and renumber my documents with the push of a button, recalculating all those order numbers so that it goes down the list again, and now everything's in proper format. But you'll recall a number of my components actually depended on that page number, didn't they? If I come back to page, what was page two, you can see all the components here previously were preceded uh, or started at 300 and counted up from there. But now they, uh, or they started at 200 and counted up from there. But now they're on page three, so realistically they should start at 300. So I can fix this, again, push of a button just by coming up to this uh, here, renumber uh, marks and renumber everything based on the page on which it now resides. And just like that, everything retags itself appropriately. And I'll do the same thing for my wires. Again, those were dependent on the page uh, number as well. So again, push of a button, renumber wires, recalculate, say OK, and it's going to recalculate those wire numbers. So making Pretty big, you know, this is actually a pretty big change to make in other softwares where you have to move drawings around. Uh, a lot of the time, these references can get lost and it becomes a manual process to update them. Uh, very, very simple and easy to do in SolidWorks Electrical. Okay, so again, what we just saw is how quick and easy it was to produce all of these supporting documentation to go along with this project, as well as to renumber a lot of the components and wires that go along with it. So just to wrap up, uh, again, the major benefit of SolidWorks Electrical is not only its ability to easily create schematic drawings, but also its ability to reuse intelligent content and produce supporting documentation automatically. Uh, and again, the supporting documentation is routinely uh, very error prone and time consuming to document manually. Now, just to give you some numbers on what you've saw, uh, seen in the past 40 or 50 minutes or so, we created three drawings uh, on which were contained about 56 components, 56 wires, and 30 cable conductors uh, with 12 unique cables. We created three drawing pages automatically, specifically referring to those terminal strip drawings. And we created nine report pages automatically. Uh, just pulling from those three initial schematic drawings that we had created. All right. Ultimately, all told, there were about 1,900 intelligent data attributes that were automatically captured, cataloged, and controlled by the system for us. So when we make changes, all of these things are being ma managed and maintained for us, so it becomes a very simple matter of updating our designs from here on out. Uh, and again, you know, maybe if I were a little quicker, it was under 40 minutes, but, uh, you know, the total time to draw and document and audit all of this uh, was uh, certainly under an hour, okay? So this is just to give you an idea of what it's like to work within the software day to day. Obviously, this won't exactly match your current processes, but you can see it was, there was no smoke and mirrors, no, no black magic here. Uh, it really is this simple to use the software and get some really nice looking drawings and projects out of it. So I'd like you to thank you very much for your time today. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, but otherwise, uh, thank you very much.